so in trying to pick what I wanted to read for today, I'm drawn admittedly through my bias to discussions, not advocacy, to mm -hmm. discussions of violence, armed struggle, how these things are defined, the narratives mm -hmm. developed around them. Mm -hmm. And there were a couple pieces where you where you engage this topic in a different couple of different ways. So in one, you are you you have an article um uh of rebels and disobedience reflections on arendt race and law breaking uh about hannah arendt which is fascinating and i definitely want to talk a bunch about that if we can um because yeah some of this was very new to me news news and new to mm -hmm. me what you were saying in that piece and then the other one was The Force of Nonviolence and Ethical Political Bind, and which is a review of a book written by Judith Butler. Yeah. And so the, the way I was trying to phrase the question in my head and in my notes here is what are you saying in your defense slash critique? Of and then oh, and then I forgot about the other piece you wrote in the boss review about Jody Dean. And yeah. what she has said about Hamas and what you were. And so in other words, my question is, what are you, and then we can get into the details of all of this and more if, if, if you like, but what yeah. are you saying about violence and its broader popular discussion or academic mm -hmm. discussion? And Because mm -hmm. I'm seeing a parallel. I feel like in what you're saying about mm -hmm. in each of these pieces and what these folks are saying about violence and how it's to be discussed but i'm so i'm I, to the extent that i'm seeing something that i'm not making up what is it that you're that what do you have to say about how mm -hmm. violence is discussed politically and popularly uh and in, in some yes. of this work that you've been talking about yes so my article of rebels and disobedience reflections on aren't race and law breaking turns to 1968, 69, and 70, and examines Arendt's writings on civil disobedience and violence, uh, where I forge a critique of Hannah Arendt. She is trying to theorize civil disobedience at the moment of his tremendous popularity in the United States and across the world in the what was then called the new left. And I noticed when I was reading her theorization of civil disobedience that on the one hand, in the late 60s, she praises white rebels, whom she calls white rebels, for their courageous acts of civil disobedience. And then she uh, tries philosophically to justify their civil disobedience legally and philosophically in the context of the United States Constitution and its revolutionary foundations in the same breath. Uh, in the same years, she contributes, I argue, to the criminalization of the black power movement and what she calls black organizations by excluding them from the zone of legitimate and legal civil disobedience. Uh, I am an admirer of Arendt, this pro this essay was very difficult to write because I had to settle accounts with her racialized theorization of what is legitimate civil disobedience and what is criminal civil disobedience. So I mm -hmm. make the argument that scholars and interpreters and admirers of Arendt have not paid attention to how she in effect criminalizes the black power movement for uh, their acts of civil disobedience or simply disobedience by labeling them as violent. She even has, uh, how does she do this? She says the white rebels, the unracially marked students in 1968-69 are a disinterested group who only care for the common good, the welfare of the nation, whereas 
Black Power Movement and what she undifferentiatedly calls Black organizations are exercising what she calls particular group interests. They say they're self-interested. They're not mobilizing for greater welfare, the common good. They are racial interest groups. She calls them interest groups. Whereas the white rebels, you know, they they uh, are mobilizing courageously for the greater good. So discovering this through careful reading of her writings around 90, between 1965 and 70, uh, it, it was shocking to me. And it was also shocking how uh, this work was received. I think about 10,000 people have read the article because it was open access. I think there is, which doesn't say anything about how good the article is, but it says a lot about our political moment where people are scholars, students are questioning these philosophers that are put on a pedestal uh, and asking about their racial politics. What type of disobedience gets to be called criminal slash violent and what kind of disobedience gets called legitimate and wonderful is something I have been interested uh, in for a very long time. So uh, studying Arendt closely was a way for me to look at this moment in 19, late 1960s. Uh, as for Judith Butler, she wrote a book called The Force of Nonviolence. Uh, and she conjure, um, I should say they, sorry, uh, Judith Butler conjures a global left uh, for whom they write uh, about nonviolence. So I read this book carefully. I think, and uh, I, I wasn't prepared to talk about that today. Oh, but sorry. I, I, yeah. I, it's okay, I can talk about it. But I ask, you know, if it's a question of framing certain actions as violent, as opposed to non-violent, we need a careful theorization not only of the processes of framing certain political acts as violence, but also framing others as nonviolent. Um, and in other words, we need a philosophy of nonviolent acts as well as violent acts. You can't theorize one without the other. Um, so as you may know, Judith Butler wrote after October 7th, a couple of pieces uh, regarding the Hamas attack um, in which uh, she you know, protested the attack by Hamas on October 7th. And she's, uh, or they are, very consistent in their philosophy of nonviolence. But uh, when Jody Dean joins the discussion and says, Judith Butler is doing a disservice, what we should be doing is recognizing, Jody Dean says, that Hamas is the leader of the Palestinian liberation struggle and that the left in the metropolitan uh, countries need to support, Jody Dean says, Hamas as its leader. So I felt, uh, on the one hand, Jody Dean got in serious trouble with her university for this article. Yeah, she's been, uh, she's been suspended, I think, correct? She's been yeah. suspended. So I, I like more than 5,000 scholars, I willingly, uh, of course, supported her non-dismissal. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what she is arguing here should be uh, allowed. You know, one shouldn't get punished for arguing this position. Uh, she was dismissed from her position because allegedly she caused a threat to student safety. On the other hand, we need a politics of solidarity, I think, that would allow fellow activists, scholars, to discuss this question of violence openly without punishment in our movements, in our universities. On the other hand, uh, 
I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like.